G'day everyone, welcome to a kind of midweek evening edition of Nat's Knackers Yard. I'll be Nat, this will be my Knackers Yard, and you will be utter gits. Um, and the reason you're utter gits is because you've basically convinced me to do what I kind of knew I needed to do. And that's not chucking the new cylinder head, as is, I am going to have to clean it out and sort those valves out, they are pretty hideous. Um, I haven't really done an evening update for a while, because um, my work's been really busy as much as anything else, so... I've been shattered in the evenings, but I'm still shattered. But I thought I'd make constructive use of my evening rather than just lounging in front of a telly or behind my phone. Ooh, focus, you bugger. Even my phone doesn't want to work at, uh, in a midweeker. It is cold. You can see my breath. So I'm not doing this in the garage. I'm going to set myself up in the kitchen. Well, I'm wrong. I'm going to. I have set myself up in the kitchen, uh, and let's do a bit of a catch-up. Oh, come on, focus. Jesus. <laughs> right, and we're inside in the warm. And we are sponsored tonight by Hobgoblin. Um, now, I have done this before on this cylinder. Well, not this exact one, but on the same bike. So, valve removal. Now, fortunately, um, it's a relatively simple process simply enough that I can do it of an evening after a day at work. So it's removing the shim buckets. Now for those that have seen my earlier ones, the shims fit in the top of the buckets, which is really handy for this bike because it means you can re-shim without completely dismantling. So whip the shim off. And if you look here at the top, you'll see basically a flat disc. Um, uh, collets underneath and you need to push those down to be able to get those collets out so it is a case of grab the cheapest tool that the Chinese end of the internet will handle one piece against the bottom of the valve move the chair out of the way piece against the bottom of the valve, cage over the top, spinny spin spin, just to get a bite and make sure you're still on the valve at the bottom. Grab the turny bit and turny turny turny. Um, so I've done um, the inlets and the exhaust from three, two, three, four. And I'm now just on the last one. So we are currently on the exhaust of one. And it's just starting to get a bit stiff. <coughs> Pop. When it just starts to get too stiff, previously I just kept going and it has slightly bent the tool. Actually, what you can do is just Give it a bit of a tap on the top and it will give you that blessed release. That pop may have just lost, just lost one of the collets, so just put something magnetic in there to drag it out. And there's the other one, it had popped, but it hadn't gone far, which is good because they are a bugger when they've disappeared. Ask me how I know. I've never actually lost one. And they have the advantage of the fact they are magnetic, so wave a magnet around on the floor and you'll find it, particularly if you're in your kitchen rather than in your garage. So pop that out. Which means that the large flat 
washer, which has probably got a proper name. You can just ping out the top. Unscrewy, unscrewy. Get that wedged out the top. gentle push so that's the construction we count the two springs an inner and an outer I don't think on this bike it matters which way up the spring goes it's not progressive but it does go in the opposite direction as you can see on the inside so one spirals left to right the other spirals right to left that's onto there Put everything in the bucket. The valve should just fall out. It has taken some mild encouragement with some, and that's what I've got. So the travelling surfaces are actually very clean on all of them. That's the cleanest I've had out. I can still see a shiny edge there, but it's mucky. It is mucky. Um, Knowledge from the book and others says to keep them together, i.e. exhaust one, exhaust one, exhaust one part. So I am on exhaust, I am on one. So E, one. Keep them together. Keep them as a set. I'll wrap them up. them away and just to repeat the exercise I will do it from a different angle this time so I'm now on the inlet side so I'm on the um, in that manifold side I need to take out the bucket first so magnet on a stick nice and free moving which can only be a good thing, it's not wedged in, They're not sticking. Gives me a bit of a sense of enormous well-being. Um, weirdly enough, I'm doing this considerably quicker than I did um, the first time that I did it. I'm also not putting anything on the other end, it is just resting against the valve because lots of people convinced me that I didn't need one of these cages on the other side as well. And all it did was slip around, it made it harder. Well, feel, this, ah, feel this one being a lot easier. It just popped straight away as you saw there. Just keep going long enough that I can see those collets spread. Uh, something magnetic to hoik them out using a drill bit because my big magnet on the stick is quite big to fit in that little gap in the cage yes yeah, so um it was pretty universal. There was one or two people in the comments said the whole, ah, give it a go. But those that were saying about um, introducing further potential errors, it's not so much the having to take it off and do it again, but it's the, it's one thing you're not going to be able to rule out as a problem later now if you don't sort it now. So I just thought I'd start on the strip now. Again, they are opposite loaded. So one twirling left to right, the other going right to left. Keeping it as a kit. Nah, that's a good example. So that one is not just slicing out. 
sluicing out, I should say. So plastic handle. Do not want to be fighting the inside with a hammer or anything, although I am getting the hammer out. Gently tapping, it's where it's been basically rusted into the seal below. It's not taking a lot, I'm not, you know, taking a run up. I'm just tappity tap tap tapping it through. I'm actually quite glad that caught because. I didn't want you to think it's all just come apart, come apart quite so easily. So, see on that one, a little bit of discolouring on the shaft, shaft, um, and some real, and you can see why it's stuck. Look at that. Now I'm going to have to look back because Sid in Bodgeneering had a really good way of cleaning these with a solvent, but I can't remember what it was. Sid, if you're watching, what was it, mate? Pug it if I can remember, um, because I don't want to use too much abrasive if I don't have to, because I'm going to start, particularly on you know the shaft elements on the tops and the very tops, less of an issue. But I don't want to start wearing away um, at the sides. Um, that's quite lucky, actually. I think that's probably about as bad as I've had. But right side right before I start talking too much rubbish I will make sure that I put things away correctly so I'm on the inlet side I won ah, ah, ah. Yeah. Yeah. the camp from Sesame Street if anybody was trying to get the uh, reference. Uh, All together I won in the box with all the other bits. Um, yeah what I was saying was looking down I had a torch. I have a torch. Um, looking down at the oil seals they actually look pretty good. Now I am going to replace them don't worry, but what I'm saying is if it was crusty and gusty in there I'd be concerned because that means that water had got in there and the rusted obviously not the case, it's aluminium, it's not gonna rust, but you know the the um valve itself would be issues. Right. What I will do is flip it over like a biatch. Um, I haven't really had a go at that stud yet. I had a quick look, but I haven't really done anything yet. Let's just have a look at what we've got left. Because I have not looked as yet. So, it's a danger I'm going to unplug it here, because I've got you plugged in for power. My phone keeps dying. Where's that torch gone? Um, so what are we on? That's one. Not too bad. Mucky, cleanable, fine. Two. Yeah, the exhaust side is looking a bit ropier. Oop. Intake not too bad. Just, just carbony. Um, three has had has shit itself a little bit really. I think it was a good technical description there. is pretty rough. Four whoop, is slightly better than three but not a lot. But the bit that I'm specifically interested in is the joins. So it's the mating surface of the shim, of the shim, of the valve uh, and the body. Because when I come to re-shimming 
that's what I'm going to be playing with. Now there's no point trying to reshim with all that shite on there. So I'm going to have to find a decent enough way of cleaning those with something that's abrasive enough to get rid of the crap but isn't going to scratch into the surface. So probably something um, copper brushy on a Dremel with a bit of patience whilst being very careful not to hit the mating surface of the cylinder head itself. Right, uh, that'll do me sound especially a quick catch up. Um, I need to turn this back into a kitchen from a workshop. Um, otherwise I will be in trouble from a incredibly forgiving lady. Right, that'll do me. Cheers all. Uh, next stop, let's get cleaning this up, I think. Ta-da. Thank you.